everybody. Um, so today I am going to talk about exploring intelligence and I'm very excited to be here. I wish this was an in-person discussion, but I'll try to keep you entertained. In trying to build smarter artificial intelligence, researchers often try to ape the brain. Yet, will brains and sophisticated AIs really be all that much alike? Today, in a two-part lecture, I'll explore this issue. In part one, um, I'll be discussing why the mind is actually not a software program. So we often use language of computers to discuss the brain. We talk about storing memories, retrieving information, processing data, and so on. But how far can we push the computer analogy when it comes to really understanding the nature of the mind itself? Is the mind really a software program? That's what I'll be talking about in the first segment of today's discussion. In part two, I turn to an issue that I develop extensively in my book, Artificial You, the topic of the possible engineering of conscious experience into artificial intelligence. So notice that many people think that consciousness is a sort of outgrowth of sophisticated intelligence. So we see this in the biological arena, for example. Um, we're more confident in attributing consciousness to ourselves and to non-human animals that have nervous systems like us. So for example, you probably think your dog feels um, or your cat feels. But, um, and in the biological arena, the more sophisticated the nervous system is, the greater our level of confidence in attributing consciousness to it. Now, I suppose that this isn't a bad idea. I mean, I'm far less confident thinking that, say, a shrimp is conscious. Maybe it has a little bit. I mean, these are super deep issues. Um, but in any case, what I want to explore in the context of a discussion of artificial intelligence today is the general question of the relationship between consciousness and intelligence. Um, I want to explore whether this sort of generalization that sophisticated systems, um, sophisticated intelligent thinking systems are also conscious. In the domain of AI, I want to call it to question, not in the domain of biology itself. So what I'll do is I'll discuss reasons why sophisticated AI may not turn out to be conscious. So super intelligent AI may not have inner experience. And I'll explore the general idea of what I call in my book, consciousness engineering. So that's where we're going today. So what I'd like to do now is turn to part one of the lecture. And I'll begin with a quote by the late Stephen Hawking. He said that, I think the brain is like a program. So it's theoretically possible to copy the brain to a computer and so provide a form of life after death. Well, is that right? That's what I want to look at today. I'd like to start with an example to kind of bring the issue home. Um, so we'll talk about a case which I find very intriguing as well as sad about Kim Sousey. Um, And I talk about this at the beginning of chapter eight of my book. So I figured I'll just read a little excerpt for you. One morning, I awoke to a call from a New York Times reporter. She wanted to talk about Kim Sousey, a 23-year-old who had just died of brain cancer. A cognitive science major, Kim was planning for graduate school in neuroscience. In college, Kim and her boyfriend, Josh, had shared a common passion for transhumanism. That's a philosophical movement and cultural movement uh, that encourages the use of technology for longevity and other forms of enhancement. When conventional treatments failed, they turned to cryonics, a medical technique that uses ultra cold temperatures to preserve the brain upon death. Kim and Josh hoped to make the specter of death a temporary visitor. They were banking on the possibility that her brain could be revived at some point in the distant future, when there was a cure for her cancer and a means to revive cryonically frozen brains. Cryonics is controversial. 
Cryopreservation is employed in machines in medicine to maintain human embryos and animal cells for as long as three decades. But when it comes to the brain, cryopreservation is still in its infancy, and it's unknown whether someone cryopreserved using today's incipient technology could ever be revived. But Kim and Josh had weighed the pros and cons very carefully. Sadly, although Kim herself would never know this, her cryopreservation did not go smoothly. When the medical scans of her brain arrived, they revealed that the cryoprotectant only reached the outer portion of the brain, possibly due to vascular impairment from stroke, leaving the remainder vulnerable to ice damage. Given the damage, the author of the New York Times article, Amy Harmon, had called me to consider the suggestion that once uploading technology becomes available, Kim's brain could be uploaded to a computer program. As she noted, certain cryopreservation efforts are turning to uploading as a means of digitally preserving the brain's neural circuits. Harmon's point was that uploading technology might benefit Kim and more generally, those patients whose cryopreservation and illness may have damaged too much of the brain for biological revival. The idea was that, in Kim's case, the damaged parts of her brain could be repaired digi digitally. That is, the program that her brain was uploaded to could include algorithms carrying out computations that the missing parts were supposed to achieve. And this compu computer program, this was supposed to be Kim. Well, Kim's case makes this abstract talk of radical brain enhancements like uploading so much more real. But her example illustrates that even here on earth, these ideas are indeed altering lives, even if they seem, even if the examples seem speculative. And Hawking's earlier remarks voice an understanding of the mind that is very much in the air nowadays. The idea that the mind is a program. The New York Times piece, for example, reported that Kim herself had the view that the mind is a program. Okay, so, and you see in the picture, Kim is uh, putting a picture on Reddit um, where the note says, freeze me, Reddit. Um, so she did get the money uh, through her funding drive and, and was able to cryopreserve herself. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.